So hello students, welcome back to the video classes. And I am Anik Ghosh with you, your chemistry teacher for the chapter water. And I think you are well, you are watching all the video classes so far. Okay, I think you are understanding them as well, right? And I know that you know what would you have to do if you don't get any of it. Then just have to write it on your forum. Okay, today we are going to start with the chapter water. And this chapter is very important because in this chapter, we are going to learn from where, where this water is coming, what is the water cycle, and what how many types of waters are there in our earth. Okay, which waters are drinkable and which waters are not drinkable. So uh, if I just try to think about it, our, our earth, if you just think about a picture on the, of the earth, if you just try to look a satellite picture of the earth, what would you see? You would see the entire world is blue in color, isn't it? Now, why the color of the earth is blue? Like it's a no brainer just because the entire earth is like surrounded by most of it. It's, it's uh, most of it is water only, right? That's why we see the earth blue from the sky. Got it? But still, I think you have heard that there is so much water crisis in our earth. Still, water is a matter of concern to us. From 1933, we are you know, uh, celebrating a particular day, which is called the World Water Day. So why are we doing that? Okay, why water is so important if that is uh, present in that much amount in the earth? Okay, so there are so many questions inside it. And are we able to drink all the types of water? Are we able to drink water from the oceans? Are we able to drink the water from the rivers? So which type of waters are we able to drink? Right, so there will be so many types of questions where, from where this water is actually getting generated. So today in this class, we are going to learn about all of it. Okay, so now, <laughs> Definitely. So we would start with the topics covered. So in this video, we are going to cover. Just give me a moment. Yeah. In this video, we are going to uh, start with the World Water Day I was talking about. Apart from that, the distribution of water, like how the water is distributed throughout the world and inside the uh, like ground and all the way. Okay, so how is it is distributed? Today we are going to learn that. Apart from that, we are going to learn about the water cycle, different forms of water. So water is not only there in one form. We know that there are states of matter, right? There are so many states of matter, right? Similarly. In how many forms would you be would we be able to find water? We are going to learn that. Apart from that, we are going to learn about water cycle. So how this water is getting inside our atmosphere, how the rain is being formed, everything about it. Apart from that, source of groundwater, water table, infiltration, and aquifer. So today we are going to learn all these things and definitely after learning all these things, you definitely feel enriched about this topic, okay? And now I want your 100% attention here before we start this class because this chapter is very much important, okay? We have had a little bit of discussion about this chapter in class six, okay? If you are with us from class six, then definitely we have the discussions about this chapter earlier as well. And now we are going to start, we are going to resume the topic from there, okay? Now, so to start with, I'll tell you, this is how water looks like, okay? This is a ball uh, and stick model where you can see the water is looking like a V and this is oxygen and these two are hydrogen. You know that the, for the formula of water, the symbol of water is H2O, the formula is H2O, right? So there are two hydrogens and one oxygen, isn't it? So it looks like this. So this is a structure, you know, this thing over here, the black one is the oxygen and these two white balls are the hydrogens over there. So this is how water is formed. Now, you can see there are bonds formed. Here is a bond, 
we call it a bond okay these sticks are called bonds okay this is not james bond right this is chemical bond and these bonds are formed by a chemical reactions and we know that chemical reactions are something special the things that makes new type of substances the things that makes new types of products that doesn't have any relations with its constituent particles and all these things we know about it right now here you go here you can see this is the structure and formation of oxygen there is oxygen and two hydrogen balls are over here and they are connected with a stick in between them we call them chemical bond so water is formed via chemical reactions fine chemical reactions between whom chemical reactions between hydrogen and oxygen so if we react hydrogen and oxygen together we are going to get this water as a result fine so this is how water is formed chemically artificially okay but this is now water this is not the way we find the water to drink so let's see <clears throat> so snow or ice both of them are solid exists on the earth in the form in the form of ice caps at the poles of the earth glaciers and snow covered mountains these are the main sources of water on the earth water is liquid water liquid is present in oceans lake lakes rivers and even the clouds right now let's try to think what they are trying to say over here so they are trying to say they are trying to tell us the what are the sources of water <clears throat> what are the sources of water fine so they are saying that in the north poles and the south poles and the polar regions the glaciers we see okay the snows we see <clears throat> okay these things are mainly the sources of water so basically the glaciers glaciers and all these things snows and all they are nothing but the solid forms of water isn't it so what is snow what is ice think about it just take some water okay put it in your fridge refrigerator you would be able to uh, you know get uh, take ice from there so ice is nothing but the solidified form of water isn't it right so the thing is glaciers and snows they are also made up of water only but they have solidified because of the temperature in the poles there are more than like there are less than 0 degree temperature and we know that the melting point of water is 0 degree centigrade right or freezing point whatever you want to say so for that reason when water goes under 0 degree centigrade it forms ice and the in uh, the enormous amount of ice present in the like uh, the poles they are the main sources of water the water we drink you got this point now apart from that apart from that we get water from oceans lakes rivers and even the clouds now right now all these things are very much uh, you know uh, i would rather say like it is not that much clear to you from where we are getting these type of things and uh, how are they giving us water but definitely we are going to read about that fine stay with me one more thing water are also found in the water vapor present in the atmosphere fine so we know that in the atmosphere there are gases there are oxygen gases there are carbon dioxide gases there are nitrogen gases isn't it they are only we would be able to find there only we'd be able to find water as well but not in the form of ice and not in the form of liquid as well but in the form of gas only fine fine getting my point so that was all about it the sources now okay yeah this thing might you know 
disturb you for a moment. Let me just see. Wait for a moment. Okay, so now we can continue. Yeah. Yes, so over here, you can see. Just give me a moment so that um, this video gets loaded okay yeah it's done now uh he, in this video we are going to learn about what are the water bodies present from where we are getting the waters okay So here he is trying to tell you that when, when the water falls from a hill, okay, falls from a hill, and after that, when it gets into the plain land, initially when it's falling from the hill, it's looking like a river, isn't it? And when it's falling on the plain land and becoming a stagnant water inside that, so this thing looks like a river, but when it is falling on the plain land in the stagnant and becoming a stagnant water, we call it a lake. Okay. So now we are going to learn about the water bodies on the earth. So oceans. So as the oceans are covering up to 70% of the earth, just think about it. The oceans are covering the 70% of the earth, but the question questions lies there. As I told you, still we are having water problems. So why is it? Why is that, right? So Just because the ocean waters are not safe to drink. For that reason only, we cannot use the ocean waters to drink. And that, for that reason only, we have a still water crisis. Then which type of water can we drink? These are the oceans, right? Atlantic, Atlantic. Indian Pacific. The Pacific Oceans is the largest one, right? You know that. 30% of the Earth's surface is covered by Pacific. Now, what is the difference between a sea and an ocean? The sea is found when where the lands. Sea is found where the land is meeting the ocean. That part is called the sea, okay? The so Mediterranean Sea is the part of Atlantic Ocean. We know about it, right? So, now this one is the river. You can see like the rivers is are the starting from some sort of these, you can see like over here, okay, in the top of the hills, there is something white. Okay, a white layer is there, isn't it? That is the ice in here. In here, the white layer, you can see that is the ice. And the river is coming from that hills only, right? So maybe this is getting generated from that ice only. And 
is this is just flowing like in zigzag motions through through the entire lands and just falling into the ocean. This is what rivers do. So what happens is from this ice, they got melted. They melt to make this, this uh, rivers. Apart from that, you have also seen that rivers, the water in the rivers are also coming from the rains as well. So the rain and the melted ice from the different types of glaciers and different types of uh, ice bodies. So from there, when they, the ice got melted, only then from there, the sea is getting, the river is getting generated, isn't it? And from where the river is, has started getting generated, that thing, that part is called the source. And where the river meets the ocean, that point, is called the mouth, okay? Mouth. That's the point. So this rivers contains, this rivers contains fresh water. These waters are the waters that we can drink. The fresh water is the water that we can drink. So these are the drinkable water. Fine. This is the drinkable water. Fine. Nile is the world's longest river. So, so far we have also seen that with rivers, the river is just flowing, right? It flows, it flows and just meets the ocean, falls like that. But what about the lakes? Then what is a lake? So lake is just like a stagnant water, a big stagnant water, water body. That you can see in the picture. The what this water body is not generating for some some places. Okay, this is just a stagnant water body which is just present there, and the water is not moving in, the, in inside that. Like the river, the waters of the rivers are moving, right? They are just movable, right? They are dynamic, but not like the lake. Lakes are static, right? So how the lakes are formed? When the water finds a base, basin, right? What is the basin? So basin, right? Like inside the land, when there is a hole like this, that is called a basin. Now, when for a moment, yeah. So when the water finds its way to this hole. This is called basin. So when this water find this way to here, that is what makes a lake, okay? Now, how the waters are finding its way to here? So it's maybe because of the rain, as you have seen already, they're saying, it may be because of the rain, or maybe the underground water is somehow sipping into that basin, okay? In both the ways, this water body this base, this uh, lakes can be prepared. Okay. So if you do not give them continuous water, so they would dry out. Okay. They need a continuous source of water for the lakes.
So you can see when the big meteor just fall into that place, so there, there was a basin, right? There was a hole, big hole just formed there. And the rain is fall, rain is when the rain is uh, falling there, then there is a water body, new water body which is getting generated, right? So you have seen like, uh, you have heard about Dead Sea. So Dead Sea is not a sea, that's a lake they're saying. And because uh, we call it sea, because just there has an immense amount of salt in it. So inside the sea, you, have, you know that there is an immense amount of salt inside the sea. So that's why we call it Dead Sea, okay? And there is no, uh, you know, animals that can live there. I think that's it, I guess. You have understood about the water bodies from where the water is getting generated and what type of water that are there that we can drink, okay? I think you got it so far. Now, just move on to the next slide. Now, World Water Day. As we are discussing about it, it's like uh, right now, there is a very big problem a new problem has been generated because we are we don't have enough water the population the population on the earth is ever increasing right when the population is increasing the demand of water water is simultaneously increasing isn't it as the demand of water is also increasing, but you can see like there are some limited sources of water only. So for that reason, we need to we need to stop wasting water because the water is getting precise, uh, precious day by day. Okay, so for that reason, we need to generate uh, new awareness awareness about water. This initiative is called World Water Day. Okay, this is uh, celebrated on 22nd March. Okay, so in 2020, the motto of this World Water Day was water and climate change. So, in this year, in 2020, what they did is they tried to show us that how the water is affecting the climate. So if you want to save your climate, you have to start saving your water. So this campaign has been started long time ago and still is it, it is very much, you know, um, active. Okay, so there are so many nations who are participating in this campaign to save our water bodies. Okay, because we know that you know that you cannot live without water more than two to three days, right? So that is the thing we need uh, the water to, you know, uh, to keep our cellular uh, functions going. You know about it, you have read it in your biology classes, right? So that's why we need water the most. The plants need water the most because they want, they generate their food from water, isn't it? So you can understand the importance of water threat. So we need to save it. For that reason, there is an awareness program, which is called the World Water Day, which is celebrated on 22nd March. Okay. Now, distribution of water. Only 3% of the water on the surface is fresh. As we were saying, like 70% of, uh, of the earth is surrounded by the oceans only, but only 3% of the water is fresh water. Fresh water are those water, those are drinkable. We drink, not only drinkable, uh, we use for our uh, different types of um, like, 
different types of works inside our home as well okay to wash di dishes to you know wash your clothes and all these things there also we need the fresh water only because the like the ocean water is not is make going to make it every like ocean water contains so much salt right so it's going to ruin your every you know metal or the things the other dishes all you use everything it is going to ruin them so for that reason we cannot use the ocean's water we have to use the fresh water only so the remaining 97 percent resides in the ocean so among like if this 70 percent if we take that we have 100 percent of the water so among them only three percent of the water is fresh and rest of the water rest of the 97 percent is just inside the oceans so this is the ocean water so we cannot use them we cannot use them we have to use the fresh water only of fresh water now the the work is not done yet of fresh water 69 percent are residues in glaciers so if we now take this three percent as hundred percent then among in that as well in that as well 69 percent is there in the glaciers so we cannot use that as well okay now there is only 31 percent left okay besides the glacier 30 percent underground and less than one percent is located in the lakes right so from the 31 percent of the three percent 30 percent is inside the earth okay and one percent is there in the lakes and the rivers and the swamps so the thing we see in front of our eyes if that is not an ocean so that is under this one percent of the uh, fresh waters fine now different forms of waters so water circulates in three forms so you know that states of matter in there we have learned that there are mainly three forms three states of matter isn't it solid liquid and gas so that is the same thing for water as well so water is of three types solid liquid and gas right the solid this thing is known as ice isn't it this liquid part is known as the water we drink okay and the gas is known as water vapor or steam right steam okay now they in this form they can be anywhere in these three forms so in in the formation of water vapors or vapors you can also say vapors as well okay so in the forms of water vapors in the forms of water vapors you find them in the clouds isn't it you find them in the clouds in the forms of solid you find them in the glaciers in the forms of liquid you find them in different types of water bodies isn't it now that is what uh, they're trying to tell you in uh, different types of pools inside the mountains and everywhere in the glaciers everywhere you see water as a solid right in liquid form water is present the oceans the lakes the rivers the all the water bodies isn't it? groundwater and the gaseous form which is vapor in water vapor in the air so in the air we know there are carbon dioxide there are water sorry there are uh, oxygen so there are nitrogen there are helium argon all these things inert gases and in there you'd be able to find water in the form of vapors only right we call it humidity think about it when uh, like the climate is a little bit humid you know perspiration occurs so much right we feel you know there is every entire like what like uh, perspiration would be entire our body in the entire body right so that is the thing because the entire um, like the entire climate is now having a huge amount of water vapor inside it okay the entire atmosphere right now just uh, at that place okay 
So that is why we call it a humid weather, isn't it? So we call it humidity. Fine. Now, yeah. So here you can see they are trying to tell you about the water cycle. Now, what is the water cycle? So if you try to think about it, like waters and everything are there, like inside the water bodies, isn't it? The waters are there inside the water bodies only, right? So let's start, think that this is a lake, okay? And this is the cloud, the sky. Let's try to draw a sun as well. You can draw better than me, isn't it? So this is the sun. Okay. This is the sun, okay. You know, it's so hot and it is just burning, right? This is the sun. Now what is happening is when the sun rays, the hot sun rays are falling into these water bodies. So what is happening is that all the water is getting evaporated. Okay, it is getting evaporated. Okay, it is getting evaporated. Now, all these water molecules those are getting evaporated, they are going to the sky. And when, they, as they're moving up, the temperature in the atmosphere decreases. As the temperature decreases, it gets cooled down. It gets cooled down. As it is getting cooled down at that, at a particular height, it would again form droplets and they would stay in the clouds in the form of droplets, in the form of water droplets. These clouds over here, they are made up of, these clouds over here, they are made up of dust particles. They are made up of different types of smoke and all, all these things. So they would hold these droplets inside them, okay? And the water would, be, would keep on going up. And there would be a time when these clouds would get saturated. That would get saturated. Now these clouds are water carrying clouds, okay? So these are the clouds that comes to a place and, you know, pose these waters. We call it precipitation and pose these waters as rain. Now, as this is falling like a rain, it is again falling into the lands and all, okay? And from the lands, it is again flowing into the lake. So you can see how in a circular manner, the entire water is going to the cloud and from the, there, this is coming down like a rain and from there, it is going again to the lake and it is just a cycle over here. We call the entire thing as water cycle. So that was the introduction. So we are going to learn about all these four steps in details later. Now, we are going to watch a video of it, okay? Let's see. So now, if I just come over here to the picture, So you can see in this picture over here, this is entirely giving you the idea about the water cycle, isn't it? So first what happens is there are the oceans, there are the lakes and whatever you say. So it gets to the cloud with the help of the process called evaporation, right? Because of the temperature of the sun, okay? So it goes, it just um, find its way up through the process called evaporation. Now, after going up, what is happening? After going up, the wind is, you know, 
taking this to the clouds and the wind is carrying the entire thing to the land now. After going to the land, it is getting condensed. Okay, what do you mean by the word condensed? When the, uh, the gas is getting uh, converted into the liquid, we call it the condensation reaction. Okay, the condensation process, okay. So due to the condensation, it is getting formed, uh, it is getting transferred into the, uh, into the like liquids, right? Like the rings and it's just falling in the uh, land like the form of ring, okay? It also gets deposited in the form of snow as well, okay? And this rains are giving uh, rise to the rivers and the rivers are again taking the water again to the ocean or inside the ground. Okay, this is how in the circular motion the the entire thing happens. Okay, that is why we call it a water cycle. Okay, I'll just watch this. The sun is heating up the water, right? From the oceans, lakes, and the uh, different types of water bodies. They are getting evaporated, right? So plants also loses water, okay? At the process of transpiration, okay? And it just goes to the air and it just cools down to give you the condensation process and it just forms the water droplets inside the clouds. Okay. So this is the process. So when when they get heavy, when they get heavy, and when they are getting saturated, when they are getting saturated and heavy. And when they collide each other together, when they are colliding together, they are giving you the thunderstorms and the rings over there, right? Rain, hail, or snow, okay? That is called precipitation. So the thing that falls on the earth, that gets infiltrated to the ground. This water is available to us in the form of ground water. That is what they're saying. And the, and the remaining water that is, you know, falling into the different uh, places that is just coming down like a river to the oceans. Back to the oceans. So this is the cyclic process, but this just goes on and on and on and on. Okay, that is why we call it water cycle because this goes on like a cyclic process. Fine. Now you can see the processes again: evaporation and transpiration. So transpiration, these are coming from the leaves of the plants. Okay, so during transpiration. The water leaves of the plants, they just gives up water to the atmosphere. Okay. And in the form of evaporation, that is forming for the lakes and the oceans and the rivers from there. So from there, what's happening is this evaporation occurs. Okay. Due to the evaporation, the entire lakes and the oceans and the uh, like different water bodies, they just go that the water from there goes to the atmosphere. So, and what is the reason behind it? Because of the heat coming from the sun, okay? Heat from the sun, fine. That is the reason of this evaporation, okay? And for the evaporation only, the next process, after that, the next process is the condensation. Now, in the condensation, what happens is, in this process, what happens is, after reaching to the cloud, 
after reaching to the cloud, the water particles, after reaching to the clouds, the clouds moves up, moves up, and here the temperature, as it moves up, the temperature, what happens to it? It decreases, isn't it? It decreases due to the decreasing temperature. So first, here the water is in the form of vapor. Okay, when because why because it is heated up. It is heated up by the sun. So for that reason, it is now a vapor. But when it just goes up, what happens is the temperature decreases. When the temperature started decreasing, so the vapor, so the vapor, vapor there, they turns into water again, isn't it? Water, water droplets, okay? Water droplets, they turns into water droplets now. And these water droplets, these are the water droplets that falls into the earth as rainwater. Let's see what we call that thing. So this is the stage two, okay? This is the part two. Now, after that, what happens is the precipitation happens. So when the clouds, when the clouds, they just hits each other, when they are saturated, okay? Let's try to understand these two clouds, okay? Both of these two, are the clouds. What happens is when they get saturated, saturated means they cannot take any other water, any other water molecules, saturated with water molecules. When they are saturated, getting saturated with the water molecules, what happens is they just hit each other. Okay, and when they hit each other, we can see the thunderstorms are coming and the water falls in the form of rain. Okay, we call the entire process as precipitation. What is the process called precipitation? When we just, you know, when we just take something, okay, and after the mixture or something like that, after and when we have done a reaction on it, when we have the things settle down, settle at the bottom of the beaker, they're not soluble anymore. We call that thing as a PPT or precipitation. Here, the raindrops, those are coming, the raindrops, those are coming, they are falling like a precipitation because they are falling down. They're falling down to the ground. For that reason, we call it precipitation. Okay, so this is the third stage. Okay. Now, the fourth stage is runoff and infiltration. Now, what is infiltration and what is runoff? The precipitation either runs off into oceans, rivers, and ground surface, or it's absorbed or into absorbed into the water. That is called infiltration. So when we are just considering that this is the ground, okay, and the ground is missed, um, you know, it is getting meet, uh, meted. Sorry, and it is just meeting to the oceans, right? So this is the ocean for you. So when the water falls into the ground, two things may happen. One is the water would just flow to the ocean. Okay, we call it flowing to the ocean. It can do this, right? It can just flow to the ocean or it can do another thing. It can just sip through the, through the ground. Okay. The water sips through the ground. So the water that sips through, that is just getting deposited inside the ground. This water is the water that we are using in our everyday life. This is the water. We call it underground water. This is the water that is, you know, uh, we are using with the help of tube wells, well, with the help of well, all these things. Okay, this process through which it just goes to the 
uh, like underground water, the rain water is going to the underground water. We call this process as infiltration. Fine. Now, water that collects or flows beneath the earth's surface, filling out the pores of the spaces in the soil, sediments, and the rocks, uh, that is called the groundwater. So the groundwater is the water inside the water inside the soil. Okay. Groundwater is formed due to the rain and the melting snow. Okay, because the melting snow and the rain both are making uh, forming this rivers and all, and they are just flowing over the ground only. So these uh, waters inside the lakes and the rivers and the, all the fresh waters, they just sifts down to the ground through the infiltration process. So that is also a source of groundwater. We can also call it aquifers, springs, and wells. Okay, so these are the uh, not uh, these are the sources of groundwater. Now you can see what is a water table. Now they are asking us what is a water table. So water table, you know, if you just uh, re go through it, the water table is an underground boundary between the soil surface and the area where the groundwater separates spaces between the sediments and the cracks in the rock. So I think you haven't got any of it, isn't it? So let me tell you what is a water table. So can you see like in this picture over here, when the water is falling down, it is just getting infiltrated, okay? Infiltrated. Infiltrated to this level. We call this thing as a saturated zone below the water table or the groundwater. We call it the groundwater, okay? Fine. Water table is that line, this that boundary, that is, you know, just separating the unsaturated zone and the saturated zone. The unsaturated water zone and the saturated water zone. That is the called the water table. That is, you know, separating them out. Okay. We call it water table. Now, infiltration, we have also discussed about it. So the process over here, you can see this is called infiltration. So how the, uh, you know, the water is getting there inside the inside the ground isn't it this process is known as infiltrated infiltration and what is aquifer aquifers are the underground water you can say these are the underground waters nothing more than that okay so after the unsaturated level unsaturated water level There comes a line which is, you know, just separating out the unsaturated water level and the saturated water level. The thing we call aquifers. Fine. So this is the thing. Okay. So you can see the pictures again. This is called aquifers. So you can see it over here as well. This picture of aquifer. Okay. Now in this picture, you can see like how the infiltrated water is taken out with the help of a, a tuber. So this is the first layer of the soil. This is the second porous layer. And this is another porous layer of the soil. So through these three layers, this water body, this water goes to the ground, underground water. Okay, so now that's it about this video. Now let's see what are the uh, frequently asked questions, asked questions over here. How will you minimize the use of water inside the garden? We can reduce the usage of water inside the gardens by adopting drip irrigation method. In this method, water will reach to the root of the plants drop by drop which will reduce the wastage of water. So if you just keep on using excessive waters, then it would just get wasted. And we cannot afford that because only 3% of the water is fresh. And among them as well, 30 70% is not usable. 
So the remaining 30%, that is the water we can use, isn't it? Up to 69% and 31%, that doesn't matter. So we need to keep it. So for that reason, we cannot afford the wastage of water. Fine. Now, what is infiltration? I think you are a master to this. So the way through which the water, you could say like this, the way through which the water sips into the ground and gets to the saturated water level. Fine. That is called the infiltration. The process water seepage into the ground is called the infiltration okay and when are the maximum the minimum temperature is likely to be occurred during the day so in the day you'd have the maximum temperature is during the noon maximum during the noon okay and the minimum temperature would be there during the dawn okay you'd feel the maximum amount of uh, you know the if that is a cold, that is, you know, if the temperature is cold right now, then you'd feel the maximum amount of cold during the dawn, isn't it? The maximum temperature is occurred during the daytime, afternoon, to be precise, and whereas the minimum temperature is early in the morning, okay? So that's it for today's video. I think you have understood all of it. So what you have to do is, if you have any doubts, you just have to write it on the chat section of our forum, okay? And we'll definitely get back to you. So that's it for this video. We definitely meet in the next video. Until then, just keep on learning from Ask Ideals. Thank you, everyone.